Welcome back. So this next video in our series on the Fourier series is going to talk about how we generalize from periodic functions, uh, periodic on domains minus L to L, to the Fourier transform, which is defined on an infinite domain. Okay, so uh, just a very, very short recap. The Fourier series idea is that for uh, an arbitrary function f of x that's uh, periodic on some domain, in this case I've chosen minus L to L, so it's a 2L periodic function f of x, you can expand f as a sum of sines and cosines uh, that are essentially also periodic in 2L uh, and, and higher and higher harmonics of those basic sines and cosines. You can represent this as a complex Fourier series uh, where you have this function e to the i k pi x over l, okay? Um, and these cks are the Fourier coefficients that are obtained by projecting my function f into each of these orthogonal function directions given by e to the i k pi x over l, okay? And if you expanded this out, you would get cosines plus i sines uh, at these frequencies. Okay, so in fact, this defines a frequency uh, omega k equals, uh, I want to call it k pi over l, k pi over l. Okay, so for each k, you essentially get cosines and sines with this uh, basic, basic frequency. Okay, um, and I'm defining this function e to the i k pi x over l to be called psi k. Good. So that's, that's for you series. We've covered this. We've talked all about this. Um, but I do want to point something out that because each of these functions is 2L periodic, essentially if you look to the left or to the right of minus L and L, what you find is that this function will repeat itself forever. So uh, L, I guess this is 3L, and then 5L, it would keep going, negative 3L, and so on and so forth forever. Okay, so this Fourier series representation is actually 2L periodic. And so essentially what it does is it gives you a tiling of this f of x defined from minus L to L, and it just repeats itself uh, every 2L to the left and to the right forever. Good, okay, not, not too complicated. And you can't get anything else if you're using these periodic functions, okay, to approximate f. But what if you want to actually approximate this uh, pointy hat function but you assume that this pointy hat function actually goes on being zero forever. Okay, so I'm gonna say uh, to infinity and to minus, uh, minus infinity here, okay? And so that's what the Fourier transform is gonna do. So the Fourier series gives you these, these periodic functions. What the Fourier transform is, it's very, very simple. The Fourier transform is simply a Fourier series as I tell, take L goes to infinity. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do for this lecture. We're gonna take this representation of the Fourier series, and I'm just gonna take L goes to infinity. Okay, and what that's going to give us is a representation of this function where it's no longer periodic forever, but if it is zero at some point, it stays zero uh, at that point, or, or whatever. You can represent arbitrary functions from negative infinity to infinity uh, with this Fourier transform. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do. So a couple of things that you're gonna see, uh, we're gonna take L goes to infinity, and what that means is that this, uh, this frequency, I wanna say that this is um, equal to K delta omega, where delta omega is pi over L, okay? And so as we take the limit as L goes to infinity, what we're gonna see is that this delta omega is gonna go to zero, so our little, um, the resolution with which we can resolve different frequencies is gonna become infinitesimally small, and this is gonna become a d omega, okay? And this sum is gonna become a Riemann integral. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do right now, okay? Good, um, this actually isn't too bad. These bounds are gonna go from minus infinity to infinity, um, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna write this out, that my f of x for my Fourier transform, and I'm gonna use a different color here, so f, uh, of x for my Fourier transform is, and the limit as L goes to infinity is the same as the limit as uh, delta omega goes to zero, okay, goes to zero. So as L goes to infinity, delta omega goes to zero. So I'm gonna use those interchangeably. Uh, so I'm gonna say that this is the limit 
as delta omega goes to zero of this sum here, okay, my sum from k equals uh, minus infinity to infinity. And now I'm gonna take this expression for my, my Fourier coefficient and I'm gonna plug it in for ck, okay? So that's um, one over two L is the same as uh, delta omega over two pi. Delta omega over two pi, that's just one over two L. Integral, okay, now minus L to L is the same as minus uh, pi over delta omega to pi over delta omega. And remember, we're taking the limit as this goes to zero, so this will go to negative infinity and plus infinity. Good. Uh, of all of this stuff, so that's f of, and I'm gonna introduce a dummy var variable, c, f of c, uh, e to the minus i k delta omega x, okay, so that's minus uh, i k delta omega, xi, because I'm using my dummy variable xi, d xi, okay, that, all of this stuff right here is just my Fourier coefficient, ck, and I have to multiply this whole thing by e to the i k pi x over l, which is e to the i k delta omega x, okay? So this, all I've done, all I'm doing here is I'm taking my Fourier series, I'm plugging in my coefficient ck, which is this projection here. I'm plugging all of this ck in, and I'm taking the limit as my frequency resolution becomes infinitely fine, or if you like, as l goes to infinity. They're the same thing. So I'm taking the limit as l goes to infinity. This is the same as l goes to infinity, or the limit as delta omega goes to zero. Good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna analyze this expression. What we're gonna find is that if you take delta omega goes to zero, this sum over uh, with delta omega is going to become a Riemann integral. Okay, this is gonna become an integral uh, with a d omega out here. And I'm actually, I'm just gonna write this out. Okay, so this is going to equal, this is the Riemann integral. Uh, the, let me try to write this out. So this is, um, an integral from negative infinity to infinity. I'm gonna move my delta omega over here and it's gonna become a d omega. So I'm gonna get a one over two pi integral from, uh, again, negative infinity to infinity. This is just negative infinity to infinity of f c e to the i. Now k delta omega is just omega. So e to the i, omega c, and there's a minus here, d xi, times e to the plus i omega x, and then this is gonna be a d omega, okay? So that's all that we've done, is we've taken our Fourier series with our coefficients, we've plugged them all into a big expression, and we've taken the limit as l goes to infinity or delta omega goes to zero. Okay, and when we rewrite this, the sum becomes a Riemann integral. Okay, so this is an integral uh, of, of these things here. Okay, and this is integrated with respect to some dummy variable C. This is integrated with respect to my frequency omega. Okay, and so what's really cool about this is now I can start pulling this integral apart and I can say that this uh, whole expression here This whole expression here, actually, let me uh, let me make it, ah. Let me uh, just include everything up to this integral. So this whole expression here, I'm going to say that that is just the inner product of f with respect to that basis function, okay? So this is, um, I'm just gonna call this, um, this function here, these are my Fourier coefficients. These are my Fourier coefficients. I take my function of space, f of x, and I integrate x out, okay? And all that's left is a function of omega. This is a function of frequency. So I'm gonna call this f hat of omega. Okay, that's my Fourier transform, f hat of omega. This is my Fourier transform. And then all of this stuff is my inverse Fourier transform. It takes me back to f of x. Okay, so I wanna write this out nice and clean um, so that you see it and then, uh, and then we'll start analyzing properties of this Fourier transform. Okay, good. So let me just write this out, f hat. Uh, I'm gonna say f hat 
is a function of omega. It's a function of these continuum of frequencies that we're going to use. Now, now we have a continuum of frequencies of sines and cosines we're going to add up to approximate this function. Uh, and that f of omega is going to be given by, we, we define this as the Fourier transform of f of x. That's what I mean by this curly f here. Okay, Fourier transform of f of x. And that equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity uh, of f of x, and I want to get my sign right, e to the minus i omega x dx. So that's all I have to do if I want to compute the Fourier transform. I take my function f of x, uh, and I integrate from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x times the function e to the i omega x. Okay, and all of these x's integrate out, and I just get a function of omega. So this is, these are my Fourier coefficients. This is the Fourier transform. These are exactly analogous to my CK's, but now this is a continuous function. Instead of having a discrete set, a discrete infinite set of function CK, now I have a whole continuum of Fourier coefficients in this f hat. This is the Fourier transform. And then if I take this f hat, if I just replace all of this with f hat, this function, this formula tells me how to get back to my original function f of x. Okay, so f of x, and we're going to call this the inverse Fourier transform. This is f negative 1 of f hat of omega. So if I have an f hat omega function, if someone gives me the Fourier transform coefficients, I can inverse Fourier transform to get f of x by this integral here, 1 over 2 pi, integral again, minus infinity to infinity, of f hat omega, and now I multiply it by e to the plus i omega x, and I integrate with respect to omega. So similarly, all of my omegas integrate out, and I get a function of x back, okay? So really cool. If I have a function of f, if I have this function of f that's defined from negative infinity to infinity, then I can define the Fourier transform by this integral expression here, and I get a continuous function uh, of Fourier coefficients, which is a function of frequencies. These omegas are just like the frequencies of my sines and cosines here, uh, but they're continuously varying. I can have any frequency, not just these integer multiples of uh, pi over L. Okay. Similarly, if I have those Fourier coefficients, so I can work in either space I like. I can work in, in real uh, x space, or I can Fourier transform into frequency space. And when I've done my work in frequency space, I can inverse Fourier transform according to this formula and re recover my function f of x. Okay. So this is extremely important. This is called the Fourier transform pair. There's a lot of neat properties uh, of this operator f, this Fourier transform I'll tell you about. So it has really nice properties uh, when I think about the derivative of f. So it's easy to compute derivatives in Fourier space, in f hat space, that just becomes i omega f hat. That's the Fourier transform of f prime, i omega f hat. So it's easy to compute the derivatives of functions in the Fourier transform domain, which makes it very, very useful for solving differential equations. It's easier for me to solve my partial differential equations oftentimes in Fourier space. So I take my function, I Fourier transform, I solve my differential equation, and then once I have my solution, I inverse Fourier transform back to my physical space, okay? Very, very important. This is the Fourier transform pair. And um, essentially, all that this is doing is generalizing this notion of a Fourier series to an infinite size domain. Okay, that's all we're doing. Uh, we're going to use this extensively to solve partial differential equations. We're going to look at its properties. Uh, this f is a unitary operator in uh, the space of, of functions. So that's a very important property. This is a unitary operator. Remember, the singular value decomposition gave us unitary matrices. Uh, and so a lot of the properties that we like about SVDs and Fourier transforms kind of carry over. Uh, so that, that, that's really useful. Okay, we're going to talk a lot more about how you can use this Fourier transform, uh, especially for solving partial differential equations in the next lectures. Thank you.